addressing that one thing though about because it something happened on living it up that I think would be yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's where I'm going now. I wanted to ask you though about before living it up. Um, when can you talk? Did you know Jerry as well when he, after he and Patty moved into the the mayor house? No, you didn't. No. Okay. Okay. So you don't know about you don't know about that that lifestyle at all. No. Okay. You know because because. You know, I've I've said to people that that his lifestyle at one point made Elvis look like nothing. I mean, he became so extravagant. No, I have to tell you that that um, bef uh, before Jerry moved to the mayor house, before. Um, Was it at the time of the breakup? Around that time, for, I don't know, you know, Tony and I, well, I might want to, are we rolling? Yeah, it's okay. Oh. I can edit in now. No, no, I just, well, I, I, did, I wanted to, I, I, it, I think this might be interesting because Tony and I started to have our own life a little bit more. For the first few years of our marriage, Jerry and Patty were almost our life. I mean, we spent almost like every weekend there. Uh, and not it wasn't bad, it's just that, but as we matured and grew, then our, our circle kind of became larger. And so we, we didn't spend that kind of time um, constantly. It, it, it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't necessarily, um, a voiced kind of uh, decision. It was. It just happened. Was it also though going back to those first days? Wasn't it also that you guys were just really starting out? Even though Jerry was a millionaire by then, it there was the other elite of Hollywood that were the older people, and I'm sure that there wasn't a cross mixing between you kids and the older so-called stars. I don't even know who they were at that. Gable and all those people were still alive. And you guys weren't going to parties with them. They were yeah, sometimes. Really? But not as much. Right. As bec when, we, when we became more of the inner core, that's when we sort of expanded our life a little more. Right. And, uh, uh, and so that's why I don't know as much about the breakup and as much about the you know the mayor thing because we really sort of you know it's like it's 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 kind of like when you break up with the uh, when you break up with a boyfriend or something uh you 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 go on this road and the other one goes on that road and, and nothing to do completely. nothing to do with with um an altercation just the fact that you're 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 developing in different uh, areas right. So say you wanted to tell me something about living it up. Oh, the one thing about that when you said that the public didn't want Jerry to uh, be grown up, so to speak, um, and that was that uh, in living it up, there were some very nice moments in that movie where uh, his character and my character had very tender times. Uh, I don't mean necessarily a, a loving falling in love, but there was a very nice friend relationship that uh, and he almost lost the little boy quality and and Norman pulled him back out again which I thought was too bad it would have given that person and he kept some of it you know but it would have given another dimension that I thought would have been very interesting um, but um, uh, because the, the guy thought he was falling in love with her I mean, his character, you know. And it was a very sweet kind of um, uh, touch that, that could have happened. But they were afraid to let it get too nice or too sweet because they wanted him to be Jerry. Who was? The clown. That was Hal Wallace, too, though. I mean, don't you think Hal Wallace very skillfully made sure he was never a grown-up? I'm sure. I'm Can sure. Can you say that? Oh, uh, I'm sure that that uh, that Mr. Wallace probably uh, had his hand in the guidance of how their pictures went. I mean, I'm sure that he directed, not directed on the set, but I mean that, that his uh, edict was uh, followed through. It was carried out. 
and what was that edict? The edict was that to keep Jerry, uh, <laughs> don't fool with success. Keep Jerry the clown and Dean the, you know, the singer. Really, the child more. Than yeah, more the more. child. Uh, and and so, how how do you think that affected Jerry in, professionally, trying to get older? Because Bill Richmond told me that even when he had to do love scenes, it was it was awful. I mean, that that was his interpretation. That Jerry was not good at it. That See, he no, hated I... having to do it. Like he was, of course, he was talking about Nutty Professor, but. But for instance, let's, I don't know whether you know much about Boeing Boeing, but it, the fact that he even tries to... Um, about what? Pro, I don't know about much. About Boeing Boeing, when he was in po Boeing Boeing with Tony, remember when he and Tony Curtis were in that movie Boeing Boeing? About, they played that two was Playboy 1960, airline they pilots were in the, in They Paris. were the airline pilots <laughs> in Paris. It was after I, it was after, okay. it was after Janet and Tony. Okay. <laughs> well, the, what happened was he owed Wallace one more movie, Jerry. Okay. okay. Well, I, 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 I don't know about it, so it's, it's kind of yeah. stupid. Okay. But I, I have to go by my own experience because I thought in Three on a Couch, I thought that Jerry was, was, uh, played, played our, our scenes wonderfully. So, uh, you know, I had to disagree with whoever said that. But I can't answer for, for Boeing, Boeing or whatever it was because I don't know what the hell it well, I don't know he what the said, heck it was. Well, the, the whole thing is that we've been told that Billy Wilder had wanted Jerry to play the Jack Lemmon role in Some Like It Hot. And that Jerry had declined because he felt that he was Jerry Lewis to people and he couldn't step into another character. It was ironic in Jerry's career that he owed Wallace one more movie and Wallace was going to get it from him. This is right at the time that he leaves Paramount, right before he did Three on a Couch with you. And what happens is they, you know, he says, I just walked through it, but he hated every minute of it because it was basically a kind of, uh, um, what do I want to say? Well, uh, you know, in, in other words, in the same movie with Tony Curtis, it, it made him look even flatter. I mean, he just couldn't do that thing with the girls. He, he looked stupid. He knew he looked stupid. And he told me that it was part of his leaving Paramount. But he was furious at even having to try it. It was wrong for him. And, you know, so we can make that with other people, that, the irony of that. You know, his, his even getting me... I, I don't know anything about it. So. Yeah, okay. So, so tell me, um, when you did Three on a Cat, you're probably not aware of the fact that that was his first movie after he leaves Paramount and Edith Head and the place that he had been for almost 20 years. And... So it's a whole new ball game now. Um, how was he different when when you met him, met up with him professionally again in '66? Um, Jerry was was uh, I don't want to say a different person because that that isn't right, but he was more of a person. He was. Um, uh, he was mature. Uh, he was doing uh, what he, I think, really wanted to do. Uh, he wasn't. He he played the the you know the the little boy, and because of the three different characters, which um, was a wonderful uh, avenue for him to get in what the public expected. Yet he could still be Jerry Lewis, an actor, a man, and. Um, uh, and I think he was, uh, you know, I, I thought he, he did that very well. I think he is one of the best directors I ever worked for. I won't say the best, but I certainly say one of the best. Um, I feel he, um, he directed me in a scene that I approached it what I considered, I guess it's my way or what seemed to me to be the right way. And we did it that way, and it turned out well. And he said, Janet, tr just try approaching it from a completely different angle, completely different angle, which had never, uh, did not occur to me. I don't know that it would have occurred to me. Um, but because of his off-the-wall kind of approaching, approaches to things, he thought of it. And I did the scene with that kind of an approach. It was wonderful.
It was wonderful. And he was so right on. Well, you were also so wonderful in that, too, because you played the psychiatrist, but you could fall in with him in a way that very few people could, like Dean did, like uh, uh, Kathleen Freeman did. You, he was, he, so he, many actors look so wooden against him in, in scenes, you know. Um, was that, do you think that might have been because you just knew him so well, or is it just a question of being a better actor? I, I don't know. I think, uh, I think that Jerry probably felt comfortable uh, with me. Um, and uh, I it just, I mean, I don't want to say anything except that I'm just not a wooden performer. So, I mean, I, I couldn't be wooden with anybody. Um, and it wasn't hard for you with him directing and playing with you? It wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all. It was the first time, again, always innovative. It was the first time that, that uh, I had ever seen, uh, in my experience, where the director had the, um, uh, the the video assist. the video uh, uh, camera uh, on the set so that he could look at the scene right afterwards. What was that scene? Do you remember what that particular scene was that you approached and they had you approach him? It was the, uh, the the scene I was referring to was the scene when I discover the fact uh, that he has been the three uh, guys for my three clients, and that. Um, and I'm leaving the boat, and I'm in the car, and I'm telling him off. And instead of telling him off angry and control, which I thought as a psychiatrist she would be, and it, it worked. I mean, it worked well. I mean, it showed I was hurt. It showed I was angry. It showed I was, um, I had been betrayed, you know. He said to do it for the first time not to be in control. Let the psychiatrist go. Don't be in control because you have been been hurt. You have been um, betrayed, and and it's the first time that's ever happened to you where you were in control. Sh don't be in control. And so I did it not in control, where I actually was almost like I was on the couch myself, and it was wonderful much, much more inventive way to do it than, than what I had, had. I mean, mine was fine. I mean, I, I, you know, but just that little difference, that little quirk difference, it was very exciting. It was fun to do. I remember that scene very well. Yeah. It was very good. All right. Uh, I think we're, uh, let's see what. You want to do that about um, about oh, I know. about I Dean ask, uh, and? Yeah, I uh, wanted to ask you when you when you uh, caught up with Dean in 1960, who was that lady? Do you remember much about that? And oh, what was like then? Oh yeah. Okay, that would be good. Do you think that um, somebody said that that Jerry trying to act and and uh, direct? was trying to realize this lost ideal of the director in Hollywood who you know the 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 actor director that 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 was such a hard thing for him to try to ch achieve you know um, women i i you lost me well no matter we'll do we'll do this and then we'll no i'm just, i'm you, you I lost just, you see one of the things that's been said about Jerry he hasn't made a movie in a lot of years that he represents this lost ideal of the actor-director, the filmmaker, really, who wants to be able to control the whole production. You know, Jerry like, represents that yeah, ideal he, that, the, that of... What he wants to do represents a lost ideal of an actor-director. I mean, look at Kevin Costner. I mean, there's a good example of something that's just gone through the roof, what, $168 million. Um, this is really kind of coming out of what Koch said, that... When Jerry was at Paramount, he had this whole studio. He didn't have to, he had the best people. He had total creative freedom. They just gave him a budget and he made the movies. Um, that really he can't work any other way. And that that's why he hasn't made movies recently. Because no one's really willing to give him that. No one's willing to say, okay, Jerry, here's the budget. We'll see you in a year. 
and that that's kind of a lost ideal in Hollywood that that it's really frowned upon now. Oh, that hasn't been uh, that hasn't been uh, uh, prevalent in years. That's I mean, what I'm saying. no, that hasn't been prevalent in years. Um, uh, I mean, you, it, it's you, it's a different business. It's today. Uh, you know, you're you're not going to give uh, how Kevin Cosner got it with Waterworld. I don't know uh, because uh, it'll never happen again. Uh, and um, uh, because it's now you're talking of too much money. You know, it it, it just uh, it's just not like it was. But Jerry told me if they would, he said, I don't know what they spend all of this money on. If they would just give me a couple of million dollars, I'd just go make a movie. See, it's weird. He's had, he has this, you know, he figures it costs this much for stock. I can get these people to be in. Where is $60 million? And Koch was saying to me the other day, you know, he's right. Of but course he's, like he's right. he's a dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, it's like. No, it, it, he is right. You don't need $60 million to make a good picture. He could, if you give him $2 million, he could probably make, I'm sure, make a, a, a doggone good picture. But it, the way it's set up today, there, there are no studios. There's no one head. You know, the buck doesn't stop at one person. The buck stops all over the the damn world. The buck stops in Japan. The buck buck stops at Sony. The buck stops at uh, Mashutsa. The buck stops anywhere. But here, there's no L. B. Mayers or Warner or Brothers anymore. There's no Frank Freeman's or why Frank Freeman exactly. You know, um, you have Spielberg. And you have, uh, and then you have agents, and you have businessmen, you know. And and from what I'm sorry, know, that's just it's just it's from, a what, from what you know of Jerry's personality, you can understand, right? Why, why he just would walk away from that. Oh yeah. Can you say that? I can understand why why Jerry would walk away from such you know that kind of of movie making today. Uh, because I feel the same way. <laughs> I mean, I never wanted to make a pic. I mean, I never wanted to be, in my writing, I'm the producer and the director and I play all the parts and it's wonderful. Um, but to make a movie, I don't want to be the producer and the, the everything, you know? I just want to play my role. I like doing what I, what I do. Um, but I like doing it the way it was, not the way it is today as much. Do you think it... it do you think that it's valid to say that when the 60s, you know, the dawning of the 60s, that that Jerry was kind of out of step with that? I mean, we were kidding the other day in an interview saying that if you think of those those movies of the 60s, Bob Carroll and Ted Malice, I mean, you couldn't imagine Jerry in any of those movies. Uh, do you think that that there was just a generation, a 60s generation, that rejected what he stood for? Well, that was the beginning. The 60s generation was the beginning of, of, um, of a divorce between entertainment, per se, and movies, in a way. There was, there was I don't say everybody now, you know, I'm, I'm being very general now, and because everybody's going to say, oh, what do you mean that there's no, you know, creativity and all that? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that Suddenly, it was a divorce from innocence. I, I think that was that's the word more. I mean, there was a divorce from innocence. There was a divorce from morality. There was a divorce from family almost. Because that was not cool. You know, that was uh, what that was old fashioned. Um, that was uh, something that that uh, that that they had no belief in anymore. And I'm not sure that Vietnam wasn't, I mean, I'm sure that that probably is what started it. Because, I mean, when I was growing up with movies, um, I was proud of my country, I was proud of my family. I mean, you know, a family was everything, morality was, you know. And, and then, for the first time, I think that that, that generation, uh, was completely disillusioned with with the war, and with the war, then came with with belief in their government, possibly, then belief in 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 
in family values that they'd been taught because they, they betrayed them, you know? And I think that was, uh, that was the beginning of, of, uh, of a divorce. But I get a feeling of a reconciliation uh, in the offing. I get a feeling that perhaps the pendulum has swung about as far as it can and that possibly, just possibly, people might be coming around and say, well, you know, values aren't all bad. You know, morality isn't all bad. Um, sure, we want freedom, okay, but, uh, but it's, it's not wrong to, to have a discipline. Um, well, you know, we were saying the other day that, that uh, the 60s generation would never watch Jerry Lewis movies. In fact, I, I talk to them, they're my contemporaries, and they don't like his movies and they don't like him. But their children adore him. Sure. When we took his interview into a duck, and their children are more conservative. Their children are trying to make the families work and everything. And Wait. they want to take their kids, their babies, to see Jerry Lewis movies. Well, it's Jerry Lewis represent, I mean, that, that is your, your logo. Uh, for identification, that's how you identify. You said the Jerry Lewis movies. It's 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 what a type is, and that that uh, and that's why I think you're seeing more of those today. You're seeing um, uh, uh, the wonderful little pig picture. Uh, what's the name of it? Is it the great little pig picture? I the, don't know it. I don't, oh, <laughs> but I, I'm, 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 I'm take blank. Your word for but it. I know but, there's a pig picture. Yeah, and and but but I'm saying that that because their families can go, they can all go, and why um, free Willie too, or, and and uh, um, uh, uh, the Brady Bunch. Right. Why the ba the Brady Bunch but was a you, big hit. But if you see Carrie in Ace Ventura, pet detective walking the dogs. You're just looking at Jerry Lewis in one of those movies where he was always walking the dog. I mean, Jerry Lewis could have been Ace Ventura, pet detective, right? I mean, Dumbass. but that's what I'm saying. Jerry Lewis is the is the. That's how you identify a, a, a type of picture. That's what I'm saying. And so, yes, of course he could. Of course he could. That's why I think he's going to come back. I know it sounds crazy, but I think he could do if he went back to the basic things that everybody loved in his movies, I think he could do them. I think he could do another movie. It's a question of whether Hollywood would allow him to. Because you're right. They think he's a schmuck for saying, well, wait a minute, I only need like two million. They think, hey, come on, get with it. If he's yeah. not asking for 60, he must be senile. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, sure. Nobody can do a picture for that. Well, they're full of it, you know. But because they won't allow a picture to be made for that. Oh, what about this brothers look something that that just came out? McMullen made for what uh, forty five thousand dollars or something, mm -hmm. and everybody is raving about it. So it can be done, and it, it to me it makes some of these. And I can't say that word. <laughs> uh, let's say it makes some of the people uh, in in charge of decisions look really kind of stupid because they just did a picture for $45,000. Yeah, well, you know what they always tell me? They go, well, that's all right, but it still costs us $5 million to promote it. <sighs> At any rate, let's just do the Dean thing and we're done. Okay. In 1960, you worked with Dean. Uh, on what movie? I worked with Dean and Tony on a picture called Who Was That Lady, which was a very funny story, a very funny picture. And Dean had come into his own. At the split, I think it was, I think people were, felt that maybe Dean wouldn't go as far because Jerry was the one who had, not the talent, but you know, the, the more uh, recognizable kind of, of uh, act. Um, and, and Dean was, was just a, a personality, but that played beautifully. So I think it was a, a, a wonderful kind of surprise that, that Dean, started his own career in a you know in his own path and um and he was at that he was so easy going and that came off on the screen and he was wonderful you know uh and and uh Lou Wasserman and MCA really gave Dean the um the oomph 
you know, the little shove. He, they did one, he did one picture, 10,000 bedrooms or something like that, that was a fiasco. But they had tried, I don't know who made it or anything, but it, 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 it really had, they, they, they tried to just capitalize on what Dean had been with Jerry instead of creating a Dean of himself. And so that didn't do well. Then they did, the MCA got him Young Lions, which established him as a dramatic actor. And then it, but still he always did it with that wonderful ease that you, you know, um, you, you, you loved. And uh, he went on and he was very good um, in, in the pictures that he did. And, um, uh, and in fact, and, had a much more successful career over the long haul than Jerry. Actually, he, he, he did have a, a very successful career, and um, as Jerry sort of went uh, in a different direction, uh, continuing what he had, you know, Dean branched off into a completely new uh, avenue, and it paid off, you know. Uh, and he was very um, uh, responsible, professional, and of course, just a joy to work with. I loved doing the picture with him. But it's, it's ironic, isn't it, that everybody was laying bets that Dean wouldn't make it. And as I said to Jerry, Dean never went through the bad years that you've gone through. And that's true, because Jerry went through a real bad time, you know, of like nobody really wanting his, his stuff. I mean, it, when, I think when you take a step out to be an artist and, 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 and stand for so much that Jerry stands for, you are in that danger of becoming irrelevant, you know, mm -hmm. because you've, mm -hmm. you've overdefined yourself. Right. So right. when it came to. You box yourself, you, you know, if you box yourself in, then, then there's no escape, you know? Right. There's also the problem of being a comic, which I try to say over and over again. Uh, I say to him, don't you understand? It's like Woody Allen. When you don't make people laugh, they hate you for it because it's so hard to get laughter that that's what they want from you. They don't want you being a sad clown. They want you to make them fall off the chair. They want you to make them hysterical. Yes, they, the, the people want Jerry to make them laugh. What people sometimes don't realize, and what, but I'm sure Jerry does, and Jerry could do it, is that that comedy is just so like this with tragedy. Because you can't, I can't play comedy without playing it straight as if it's tragedy, because that makes it funny. And I think that, um, uh, that, that, that Jerry could do it brilliantly. He could make them laugh and cry. I know he could. That's great. Thank you very much. You were great. You were great.